Hello everyone, your girl Tay here and I'm bringing you another Let's Talk Wild podcast episode. Today is February 1st, 2024 and this is episode 56, Black History, Animals and Hip Hop. Animals have inspired many things, including hip hop. So to kick off Black History Month, I'll talk about different species of animals that have made their mark in hip hop through names, logos, songs, and of course, the bars. But before we get into that, make sure you follow and subscribe to the podcast on all podcasting and social media platforms. You could support the pod by becoming a subscription member. You could go to my podcast website on Buzzsprout to sign up. I'll have the link in the description box. Also, hit to YouTube, subscribe to the channel, and check out the videos over there. Once you're done listening over here, you guys already know the drill. Now, let's talk why. <laughs> Animals and hip-hop are some of my favorite things, so talking about them together is a treat for me. My love for hip-hop started when I was a kid, growing up with the big speakers and music blasting. That's how I still listen to my music, actually. Headphones and earbuds aren't my thing. My mother and my father would have all the 80s and 90s hip-hop blasting. I said before in a podcast episode that my aunt had the hookup on the CDs, okay? So I got some of my music collection from her. And then when I started working as a teenager, I would go to the music stores and the mixtape stores to get my music, which we actually don't don't have any more like music stores. I would go into the store and listen to parts of the CD before buying it. It was such an experience. Everything is streaming now and you can, you know, you can still order vinyls and CDs as collector items online. Like who's really using, you know, CD players these days? You know, I know some people do play their vinyls or whatever on the vinyl players or whatever, but record players or whatever they're called but um yeah I missed music stores I had great memories with the music stores even I still would go to the uh, music stores even when uh, we were using LimeWire to like download illegally download the music and then like we would make our own CDs But sometimes the tracks wouldn't play on the CD. So I was just like, you know what? I like supporting my artists. I'm working. I got the money. Let me go, you know, in the mall. I used to go to the F, um, the FYE store. I don't know if it was called FI or FYE, how they pronounced it, whatever. But I know it was, uh, that music store was in East Point Mall. And I would go there and, you know, I would get my Walkman CD player and, you know, and go buy my albums. Actually, I remember uh, buying Joel Santana, a couple of his albums um, from that actual store. The store is closed down now. May it rest in peace. But yeah, I had great memories going there with my Walkman CD and buying my Jewel Santana albums, okay? And speaking of Jewels, he leads us to our first topic, animal-inspired rap logos. Jewel Santana is one of the members of the rap group, The Diplomats, also known as Dipset. Who was your favorite Dipset member? Let me know in the comments. Was it Jewels? Was it Cameron? Was it Jim Jones? Let me know. Now, their logo was a red, white, and blue eagle holding a Harlem World banner. According to the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, America made the bald eagle its national symbol in 1782. During that time, the country may have had as many as 100,000 nesting eagles. By the 1800s, the population started to decline, and with some of their major threats being habitat destruction, hunting, and their food being contaminated, with the insecticide DDT, which was used to control mosquitoes, the DDT would make their eggshells brittle and easy to crack, causing population decrease. In 1940, Congress passed the Bald Eagle Protection Act, which prohibited the killing, selling, or possession of the species. In 1972, the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, EPA, issued a cancellation order for DDT based on its adverse environmental effects, such as those on wildlife and its potential human health risk. 
1978, the species was listed as endangered in the lower 48 states. In July 1995, bald eagles in these states were reclassified from endangered to threatened. On June 28, 2007, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife announced the recovery of the bald eagle populations and they were removed completely from the list of threatened and endangered species. They are no longer protected under the Endangered Species Act. However, they are still protected under the Migratory Bird Treaty Act and the Bald and Golden Eagle Protection Act. Both laws prohibit killing, selling, or otherwise harming eagles their nests or their eggs wow okay yes honey we just went through the whole bald eagle timeline of their decline to their uprising okay i know that's right just like the black community rise up okay happy black history month but yes i love that you know, they had the eagle as their symbol you know they just made it their own even though it was like just it looks just like a regular standard symbol you know but it's the diplomats what can we say what can we say the logo was cool but the bars was even better you feel me you feel me <laughs> now let's head to canada and discuss drake's logo for his october's very own also known as ovo brand his logo is an owl and i really love the design it's simple but it works i love how the ovo lettering is incorporated in the owl's face the o's being the owl's eyes and the v being the beak now there are over 200 species of owls Owls, they go that Baltimore accent, honey. Owls, hold on. There are over 200 species of owls, and 16 of them call Canada their home. Some of my favorites are the snowy barn and great horned owls. Okay, I really love owls. I think that you know, being a creature of the night, you know, um. A owl is basically, you know, our, our, one of our spirit animals, basically. <laughs> being an insomniac, you know, just being a creature of the night, um, which I believe, you know, Drake is. He is a Scorpio. We are very deep thinkers. A lot of Scorpios are insomniacs. We stay up at night. Right now, I'm recording uh, the podcast <laughs> at night <laughs> right now. I usually would have recorded it during the day, but uh, we were really behind and things that we had to do. So I'm just like up at night doing it right now as fast as I can um, before the baby wakes up. But, you know, I'm just not doing it fast enough because I'm just rambling right now <laughs> but yeah I really love owls um and I think it's really cool that he used it as his logo you know now on to the next topic animal rap names let's run down the dogs we got snoop dog we got nate dog and we got the dog pound okay woo 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 let me hear the dogs woo woo i want to hear the dogs barking let me, let me hear all the growling the barking and the all <laughs> not me trying to get my best my best dmx which we will get into dmx uh, a little later but <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to give my my good dog DMX impression, okay? But let's get into it. We have um, Nate Dog. May he rest in power to the rap harmonizing harmonizing king Nate Dog. I really love Nate Dog. He was just so smooth. He is so smooth. I still listen to his music. His music is just ah uh, that just gangster rap. R&B, smooth, you know, you know how Nate Dog coming, period. So rest in power to him. The Dog Pound, whose uh, members consisted of Daz Dillinger and Corrupt, who I both still listen to. And the extended family, the Dog Pound Gangsta Click, consisted of various artists, including Nate Dog and Snoop Dogg. Now, Snoop Dogg probably is the most famous of the dogs and has continued to be a household name. He has a serial, he has a cartoon show or some type of, 
you know, show, multiple shows, I believe, you know, he's always booked. They have a category for different uh, breeds of dogs. He's definitely a working dog, okay? Okay, like he's built and bred to work because this man doesn't stop. Okay, he's always looking, he's always doing something. And Snoop got his nickname from his mother who named him after Snoopy, the dog from the Peanuts, which most bl black people, we don't call him the Peanuts. We call him Charlie Brown. The Charlie Brown, Charlie Brown is the whole entire show. We don't call it the Peanuts. We call it Charlie Brown, okay? Now, Snoopy is a beagle, but Snoop identifies as a Doberman pincer. You know, they said they look alike. <laughs> he identifies as a Doberman pincer. You know, if he, you know, is a dog in his dog, you know, era, he identifies as a Doberman or does the Dobermans identify as Snoop Dogg? That's a good question. Mm -hmm. But I do have a question for you all. Have you subscribed to Let's Talk Wild on YouTube and on all social media and podcasting platforms? Make sure you do. You can also support the podcast by signing up and becoming a member. You could go to my podcast website on Buzzsprout to sign up. I'll have the link in the description box. Now, let's crawl back into the show. Cue the animals. <laughs> You know what a dog needs? <laughs> DMX. <laughs> Y'all know that song with him and Aaliyah. You know what a dog needs? Woo, woo, a dog need a woo, woo. <laughs> That was horrible. Y'all, do not, do not, do not, do not. But DMX, he doesn't have a dog <laughs> rap name, but he does refer to himself as as a dog and does a lot of barking and growling in his music. He also went into detail uh, in an interview with Drink Champs where he talks about his love for dogs and his connection to them. And I was happy to be able to witness and experience the versus battle that uh, he and Snoop did, Snoop Dogg did before he passed away. I really enjoyed that. It was the battle of the dogs, honey, period. We had the Doberman being Snoop and we had the Pitbull being DMX. So, you know, that was a great um, moment for hip hop. So, yeah, shout out to Swizzy uh, for putting that together. Uh, may DMX rest in power, but we're going to never, you know, forget him. That's why he was brought up in the podcast episode today because he is hip hop. You know, he's part of it. And lucky for me, he's a dog, dog. <laughs> I play too much. I cannot do any type of growling, none of that. I cannot pull the dog barking or the growling off, honey, because I am really a meow. I'm a, I'm a cat girl. Y'all already know that. I love the dogs too, but honey, I'll give you a good meow. I'll give you a good meow, a little hiss and all of that. But honey, absolutely not. Not the barking. I've tried. We're done with the dogs for today. Okay, we're done. We're done. But may DMX continue to rest in power. Next up, we have animal-inspired terms, songs, and lyrics. Now, culture vultures used to describe people who aren't a part of the black community, but they try to steal from our culture, like vultures waiting to snag a free meal after the lions have done all the work of taking down the prey. You know how the vultures want to fly down, come down, get a little peck here, a little peck there. Can I have a little piece? No, you ain't do no work. You just sat up there, watch us do all the work. Now you want to come down here and get a piece? Absolutely not. Fall back. Fall back, okay? Period. Another species is the rat. Now, multiple rappers and just hip hop culture in general have used the rodent to describe someone who snitches or runs to the police. So the rats don't get any love in the hip hop community, but it's still a part of the culture, if that makes sense. Now, two things New Yorkers know for sure, that is raps, 
and rats. <laughs> Hip hop started in New York and the rats basically run New York, so much so that they now have the New York Transit Rat Detector. I did a podcast episode on it. It's episode 49, Rats in the City. Take a listen or watch on YouTube when you're done listening and watching over here, okay? Now, some of the ladies of hip hop will help us with songs and lyrics. I think the most animal inspired song would be Doja Cat's Moo, I'm a cow, I'm a cow. Now, some people will say it's not hip hop, but she was spitting a little something on the song and I consider her a rapper. I consider her a rapper that can um, rap on different types of beats and um, rap on different types of sounds and stuff like that. So this for me, she's a rapper. So the hip hop genre, it is. Now she was dressed in cow print in the video and you know, she was just saying moo, 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 <laughs> like just moo. She's a cow. She, she said she not a cat. She a cow, okay, itch, I'm a cow, moo, itch, I'm a cow, I'm not a cat, I'm a cow, that's what she was saying. And I think this was the song and the video that catapulted Doja's career because everybody was so, like, obsessed with the video and her, and like, who is this girl? What is she talking about? What is going on? So, yeah, that's when, you know, started to become this global phenomenon of an artist. So, yeah, Doja Cat says she ain't a cat. She a cow, but I think she a, I think she a cat now. She might be a hybrid, but We'll know. <laughs> we'll know. The world may never know. In my OVO Drake Owl eyes. <laughs> like on that commercial, how many licks does it take to get to the center of the Tootsie Pop? Let's find out. One, a two, a three. <laughs> A three, but with Doja, you never know, okay? Now let's take it back to Little Kim's verse and all about the Benjamins. She said, You want to rumble with the B, huh? Bzz, throw a hex on the whole family. Okay, what y'all know about that, Little Kim? She was the original Queen B. I'm sorry to the Beyonce fans, but it's true. Beyonce knows it's true because she's definitely, you know, shown Kim some love. And Kimmy refers to herself as the Queen Bee and has a song called The Beehive. But sorry to the Queen Bee, she had a good run. But the Queen Barb, Nicki Minaj, has some wild animal bars. And her 2012 diss track aimed at Lil' Kim called Stupid Ho, Nicki raps, I get it cracking like a bad bat. It's talking she the queen when she looking like a lab rat. Oh my goodness, that was a mess, honey girl. What? Looking like a lab rat? Absolutely not. What? No, no, no. <laughs> no animal testing, girl. And and she said, hold up, look, Bubbles, go back to your habitat. MJ gone and I ain't having that. How you going to be the stunt devil to the monkey? Top it off, I'm in the phantom looking hella chunky. <laughs> that was crazy because, oh my goodness, let me catch my breath, honey. Look, Roman was trying to take, take over me, okay? He said, say what, girl? Say it again. Look, Bubbles, go back to your habitat. MJ gone and I ain't having that. How you gonna be the stunt double to the nigga monkey? Top it off under the phantom like hella junkie. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> that was crazy because she compared her to Bubbles, the chimpanzee that Michael Jackson had as a pet. Those bars was crazy. I'm like, oh my gosh, girl. She is insulting your face right now. Lab rat, bubbles, looking like a chimpanzee. What? That was bad for Kim. But listen, I do have good news. Bubbles is still alive and doing well. He now lives at the Center for Great Ape Sanctuary in Florida. According to the sanctuary, despite the fact that he is very photogenic, Bubbles is difficult to photograph because he does not like the camera. He often will turn his back when he sees a camera. End quote. 
Uh, it seems as though he just wants to relax and live a somewhat normal life after living in the limelight, you know, all these years with Michael Jackson. He's like, absolutely not. Cover me up. Where's Michael? Where is Michael? I'm over this. Don't take pictures of me. Paparazzi, please. No, he was over it, honey. Absolutely not. But shout out to Bubbles for, you know, still being alive. And shout out to him for inspiring Nicki Minaj to, you know, put that crazy bar in her song. <laughs> now, let me give my final thoughts before we head on out of here. Hip hop and black culture have inspired so many, but I love it when black people can take from nature and the animals and incorporate them into our culture. It's a perfect blend that should be highlighted more but you know what? That's why I'm here, to do just that. Happy Black History Month. What do you guys think of the episode? Leave a comment let me know how you feel about today's topic, Black History, Animals, and Hip Hop. Leave a comment, follow, and subscribe to the podcast on all podcasting and social media platforms. Don't forget that you can now support the podcast by joining the monthly membership subscription. You can go to my podcast website on Buzzsprout to sign up. I'll have the link in the description box. Love yourself, one another, your pets, and the animals. I'll talk to you guys next week. Bye.